Well, welcome, everyone, to the Wednesday Warriors Call. I'm your host, Mr. Lifestyle, Jamie Swindell. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you would, who's with us on the call today? Just state your name and from where you call it. Al Parker, Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Al. Hey, Al. Good to hear your voice, my friend. Good morning. Good morning. Guy, Guy Burns, Virginia Beach. Hey, Guy. Good morning. Yafe, North Carolina. Yafe, good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It's Tamra from North Carolina. Hey, good morning, Tamra. Good morning. Everyone else being shy. (laughs) If you want to say your name and where you call it from. Gail, Little Rock. Hey, Gail. Hanging out in the background. Good morning. (laughs) Well, fantastic. This call is designed for Christian business owners who desire to have a God-class lifestyle. This means that we are dedicated to living and experiencing God's very best in our wealth, health, and relationships. We aim to place God first in all that we do, which empowers us to prosper. Toward the end of this call, I will open the line for questions and comments. And within a few days, the recording of this call will be available on our website, which is MrLifestyleSpeaks.com. That's MrLifestyleSpeaks.com. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us the desire to serve you and want to learn more about you. Father, we acknowledge you in everything that we do. We want the best that you have for us on this side of eternity. Yes, people talk about, hey, you know, we can suffer now so we can go to heaven later. But, hey, I don't believe, we don't believe that you called us or you call, you're calling us to suffer like that on this side where we're not supposed to have any wealth, health, and relationships. No, no, no. You said that you sent your son so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. You said that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You said that it is you that give us the power to get wealth. I mean, I can go on and on stating back the scriptures that you have written down in your word as to how you want us to live. So, Father, it is the purpose, the goal, and the mission of this call to learn more about you so that we can live more like you and we can have those things that you've called us to have and be an example in the earth as to what you and your son is all about. So, Father, as we go into your word, please open up our minds and illuminate your word in such a way where we can't forget it, where we can utilize it in our business, in our lives, and our relationships. To you, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the name above all names. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, if you would, turn with me in your Bible to the book of John, chapter 13. John, chapter 13. And this is going to be an extremely powerful word for you this morning. I am excited to deliver it. <laughs> John 13, All right, starting at verse 1. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation this morning. And it reads, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on the earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judah, Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from his table, took off his robe, wrapped the towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you you do not understand what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, Well, in that case, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. (laughs) I love love Peter's (laughs) bed. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash 
except for the feet. You should be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor the messenger more important than the one who sends them. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Friends, the title of this morning's message is Leadership, colon, Love, Loyalty, and Betrayal. Leadership, Love, Loyalty, and Betrayal. See, one of the things that I deeply admire, admire about Jesus is that he did not just talk leadership, he demonstrated leadership. And in today's environment, we have a lot of talkers, a lot of people that say a whole bunch of things, but when you look at their lifestyle, it does not line up with what they say. Jesus made it a point to live publicly, to show people how to live. He, wanted, he always made sure that his words lined up with his actions and his actions lined up with his words. And if we could be more like Jesus, oh, there would be so much less frustration and strife and turmoil in this world. A lot of people talk great things, and they talk tough about different issues. And now they say they believe the Bible, and they believe this and believe that. But when you take just not even a – you take a little microscope, just kind of, not even a microscope, you just, just – just peer over into their lives. Like, whoa, you said this, but you're living like that. What's up? And, 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 and Christians, we have, we do not need anyone else to give us another black eye because we're constantly giving our own selves black eyes by how we live. Our lifestyle does not match up to our words. And see, Jesus loved his disciples. He loved his disciples, which means we must love the people that we lead, just like Jesus. And see, although the content of this call applies to all people, everyone under the sound of my voice, who on a call right now, who's listening to this call through the Internet or some other means, this message applies to everyone. However, I'm going to, di- I'm going to direct this message to two specific groups of people this morning. Number one, those of you who are in relationship marketing, also known as network marketing or multi-level marketing, Uh, and also those of you who are married or deem or desire to be married. Those are the two specific groups I'm going to speak to this morning. Again, although the message can apply to anyone no matter where you are. Okay? So network marketers, married folks are the two main groups. Okay? So just kind of keep that in your mind. Let's break this down. Verse 1. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and to return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. What does this mean for us today? Well, friends, that means you need to love your team. Right? The people that's on your team, as you're building your business, you need to love them. You need to love your spouse with all of their Jacked up ways, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, with all their frailties and character flaws and all of that, you need to love your spouse, right? You said to death do us part. You said for richer, for poorer. You said good times and bad times, right? You said that. You told your team, hey, listen, follow me, right, and I'm going to take you to where you want to go. If you follow me, you will have more wealth. You'll have more health. You'll lose weight. You'll do this. Whatever it is that you market or do in your company, you told your team, hey, follow me. I got you. Look at this company. This company is amazing, right? I joined. You should join too. Join with me, and together we're going to build something great. You said that. You told, you told them to be a part of what you're doing. So love them. Pour love on them. And you've got to remain committed to your commitments. Remain committed to your commitments. And one of my mentors says, commitment means 
doing doing what you said you would do long after the mood in which you said it has left you. <laughs> Commitment, doing what you said you would do long after the mood in which you said it has left you. <laughs> you can easily see that in marriage, right? On, one, on your wedding day, you said one thing, but then over time, it becomes easy to not do what you said. <laughs> When that spouse starts tripping and things aren't acting right, it's easy to be like, man, forget this. I am out. Right, now, I'm not talking about, you know, abuse or molestation or rape or, you know, those types of uh, violent crimes. I don't, I don't believe that God would call us or want us to stay in an abusive relationship where our life is on the line or our kids' lives are on the line. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not addressing that. Right, you got to do what's what's safe, you know, for you and your family. I'm talking about, you know, how when people say, "Yeah, we got separated for irreconcilable differences. Ah, uh, we grew apart. You know, grow back together." <laughs> right? At one point, you said that was the one. You said that man, that woman was the one. So now that now that the, the, the winds are blowing, it's getting a little tougher. It's not now the time to tuck your tail and run. Again, I'm not talking about abuse and, and all that type of stuff. I'm talking about you guys, you guys are just saying you're growing apart. You're just, you're just, not, uh, just not clicking. You know, I, I still love that person, but I'm not in love with them. You know, those types of things. We got to be stronger, friends. If we're saying that we believe the word, then we need to believe the word and, and do what the word says. So as a leader of your team, as a leader in your family, you got to love the people that you're called to lead. Your spouse, your your kids, your team, love them. Verse 2, it was time for supper, and the devil had prompted Judas. The devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. What does that mean to us? You got to love your folks even when you know they are not being truthful or they are in the process of betraying you. Mm. Now, that's not easy. If you know someone's lying to you, you know someone is setting you up. <laughs> it's not easy to continue to love them. It's easy to withdraw and defend and protect and, and run and all of that. It's not easy to continue to love them even when you know they're not being truthful or they have ulterior motives in mind. Now, it doesn't mean be dumb. Right? You wanna, the word says be wise as a serpent but as harmless as a dove. So it's not living in denial. Jesus knew that Judas was about to betray him. He knew it. So it wasn't like he said, nah, nah, it's not going to happen to me. He's not going to betray me. It's not going to happen to me. No, he wasn't doing that. He was aware, but he still loved them. He didn't change how he treated them. He didn't say, hey, Judas, I know what you're about to do. You sit over there in the corner while I eat with the rest of my faithful disciples. <laughs> the 11 of us, the 11 of, them, 11 of you guys, you sit over there, you by yourself, Judas, sit in the corner looking at the wall. Nah, he didn't do that. He continued to love them. Jesus' character never changed, even though the behavior of the people around him did. He was solid. He stayed firm throughout the whole thing. Again, I'm not saying this is easy whatsoever. So you want to love the person in spite of the spirit which may be controlling them. Love the person in spite of the spirit that may be controlling them. Right? That person may seem out of sorts. They're not acting right. Well, they, they may have a spirit controlling them. Notice it said the devil had already prompted Judas to betray Jesus. So the devil was working. He was in there doing his thing, causing mayhem and mischief, mischief right? He's looking to see who he can mess up. Right? The word says that Satan goes to and fro looking to see who he can seek, uh, looking to see who he can destroy. Right? He's looking to devour people. He's looking to destroy. He's looking to cause issues. So that person that ain't acting right, they may be being controlled by demonic forces. So still love the person in spite of the spirit which may be controlling Again, that's not easy at all. Someone starts acting crazy, your first, the first reaction is to jump in your flesh. And, oh, you're going to act like that. Let me show you something. You know, and then the chest starts puffing up and the ego comes out and the screaming and the fighting and all that. that that's what's natural. But to be a leader like Jesus, we have to refrain from that and continue to love the person inspired the spirit which may be controlling them. Verse 3, 
Jesus knew that the Father had given him all authority over everything, that he had come that he had come from God and would return back to God. So Jesus knew who he was. He knew exactly who he was. He knew he had all authority. And he knew he came from God and he was going back to God. That means we need to know who we are. Right? You want to know who you are. What are you about? Who are you in Christ? What did God say about you? Or who are you? And know your mission or your why. Know who you are and know your mission and know your why. See, if you know why you joined your company, you know why you're building this team, you know why you got married, why you had kids, you know, why you're trying to go a certain place. If you're clear about that, you know who you are, you know who, who you are, and you know your mission, then you don't have to worry about the naysayers. You don't have to worry about those who will betray you. You don't have to worry about, excuse me, the people that have ulterior motives because you're on a mission. You're clear about who you are. So what they do and say matters not. Know who you are, know who you are, and know your mission, your why. Why did you get involved in that company? That's really important, especially for network marketers, relationship marketers. Why did you decide to join your company and build a team? Is it just to make more money? Is it to make a difference on the planet? Is it for freedom? Is it for residual income, passive income? Is it to take care of your spouse, you know, retire them from their job so they can be home and be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad? You know, is it to take care of your parents? Are they getting older and now you want to take care of their bills and to have their golden years and not have to you know, be in worry and stress? What is it? Why did you get involved in your company? Why? Because you want to be really clear about that and hold on to that when the tough times come, when people are laughing at you because you're involved in a company and they, can't, they don't understand it. When you, when you decide, if you decide, you know, to leave your job, and people are like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? How are you going to leave this stable income, right, to go sell some vitamins? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Right? What are you doing what? Are you selling telephone service? Mm. Okay, you're going to leave your job, huh? You selling legal services? Are you a lawyer? No? What are you doing? Like, <laughs> when people start acting crazy, you got a whole firm to why you got involved in what you do. When your spouse is tripping, you got a whole firm to what you said on your wedding day. Look back at why you married that person in the first place. What was it about that person that attracted you to them? What was it? Was it the way they smiled? Was it the way they treated you? Was it the way they talked to you? The way you, like, what is tap back into that? Try to always hold that near and dear to your heart, even when they look like the devil in front of you. <laughs> Even when they look like the uh, exorcist, right, when they're spinning around and green stuff coming out their face, hold on to why you love them in the first place. That'll get you through those tough times. you got to separate the behavior from the person. Yeah, they might be going through something right now. The devil might be messing with their mind. But you want to keep, you want to hold, you want to hold firm to what it is you saw when you decide to hook up with them. Verses 4 and 5. And again, we're in John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verses 4 and 5 says, So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around them. This is a powerful scripture right here. See, he had to take off his robe. <laughs> I want you to think about this, right? So Jesus took off his robe. He took off his robe. That's what folks wore back then. Then what was left? I don't. I don't think they had Hanes and Fruit of Loom underwear back in Jesus' time. You know, and as I researched this, many folks believe that when he took off his robe, he was naked. There, 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 he didn't have you know some fig leaf Hanes on, some environmentally friendly. Fruit of looms, like <laughs> that was it. His robe was everything. So if he took off his robe, and if he truly was naked, regardless if he was absolutely naked or not, he was more vulnerable. He was more. He was closer to naked <laughs> than he was when he had his robe on. 
So sometimes you may have to get naked and vulnerable with the people you love, with your team, with your spouse, with your kids. Sometimes you have to take off the front, take off that thing that's protecting you, your ego, you know, your, your personality, the, the way you have conditioned people to know you. Sometimes you've got to take that off and be 100% naked and vulnerable with the people you lead as this builds trust, confidence, and loyalty. It builds trust, confidence, and loyalty. People are tired of wearing a mask all the time, but no one's going to take off their mask until you take off your mask first as the leader. When they see, wow, Yafe is just truly legit. She's not trying to front. She's telling me what's going on. She's she's being 100% truthful. Man, I like her. Now, I can be truthful now, too, because I see that she's not trying to do something to me. She's just being real. She's just being real. There's just something about that vulnerability. And as a leader, we typically don't like being vulnerable. We like for everybody to think of us as Superman or Superwoman. We don't want people to see Clark Kent. Clark Kent was a nerd. Right? Clark Kent was clumsy. Clark Kent had no power, just an average dude with some glasses on. We don't want people to see that. We want people to see the muscles and the curly hair and leaping over buildings in a single bound. We want people to see that cape blowing off in the wind. right? <laughs> but that's not who we are all the time. We may have some superhero tendencies, yes, we live our lives as Clark Kent, as that regular person. Let folks, let's be truthful. If it was okay for Christ to be vulnerable and to bear himself, then I think it's okay for you and me to do the same. I know what you're saying, but I'm afraid that people are going to hurt me. They're going to take advantage of me, right? So I got to stay strong and tough and, you know, ice grills the whole time. Nah, nah. Look, you got to just face the fear of getting hurt or taking advantage of you. Will some people hurt you? Yes. Will some take advantage of you? Yes. Right? Notice Christ took off his robe, revealed himself, was more vulnerable, and got down and washed his disciples' feet, even knowing in advance that Judas was going to betray him. Man. Can you imagine to know in advance that somebody's going to jack you up and you still love on them and you still treat them with kindness and respect like you do with your faithful 11? That's some, that takes something right there. By no means am I saying that that's easy. Because Jamie the man <laughs> will want to start breaking Judah's toes while I'm down there washing his feet. <laughs> All right, know what you're going to do, punk. Pluck that big toe. That's for the betrayal you're going to do tomorrow. Let me take this toe and twist that one for the one you're thinking about doing next week. (laughs) It's hard to put that to the side and just continue to just wash his feet with loving kindness. It takes something. But that's what being a leader is all about. Rising above the fray and staying focused on the mission. What is it that you're trying to do? What kind of team are you trying to build? What kind of family are you trying to set up? You got to stay focused with it. Verses 6, go to verse 6, six verses 6 through 9, John 13, 6 through 9, says when Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not understand what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my This is powerful right here. This whole exchange right here kind of speaks to the process of being accepted. So a lot of times what happens, especially in the world of network marketing, relationship marketing, um, you'll present your opportunity to someone, right, your business. And uh, initially, is met with skepticism, just like Jesus presented an opportunity to Peter, saying, listen, here's the opportunity for me to wash your feet. No, 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 you will never, ever 
Wash my feet. I like that. You will never, ever. <laughs> the New Living Translation keeps it so real. You will never, ever wash my feet, Peter protested. So he was skeptical, like, Lord, what are you doing? Get up, man. Put your robe on. Yo, I'm washing my feet. Nah, uh-uh. All right, so that's what happens. You present your opportunity. People meet with, is met with skepticism at first. Or you, you're, about, you're going to change your behavior with your spouse. Right? After hearing this message, like, oh, man, I've been falling short with my spouse. So now you go back to your spouse and say, listen, I apologize for how I was being. Here's how I'm going to be moving forward. In many cases, they're going to be skeptical. Like, yeah, whatever. You heard a little message. It's going to change you for about three hours, and then you're going back to your devilish self. Whatever. Okay. So they're going to be skeptical when they're presented with a new opportunity. But then only after persistence, being persistent in your behavior, being persistent in presenting the opportunity and showing folks that you're serious, you are going to train them, you do care for them, you're not leaving like that other person did, you are going to stand firm, only after persistence does wild acceptance come. All right, it's actually, so you got new opportunity, then skepticism, then acceptance, then wild acceptance. That's pretty much the process. Same for business and marriage. Right, so you present an opportunity, your business model, your prospect is skeptical. I don't know about that. Sound like a scam, sound like a pyramid scheme. I don't know. Right? And then when you're persistent, doesn't mean you keep pushing the business down their throat. That means that you're living your life. You're living your life and showing the fruits of your business through your life. When they see it over and over again, they see how you're being, they're they're hearing different things, eventually they may say, you know what, hey, I want to get down. And then they're involved for a little while, and it's like, well, this is the bomb. I don't know what took me so long to get involved with what you're doing. So now they're wild, they wildly accept it. It's the same in marriage. You present a new opportunity, baby, I'm going to be like this from now on. Yeah, whatever. I heard that before. But you continue to be that way over time. Then eventually that spouse says, wow, you really have changed. Oh, my gosh, I am falling more in love with you than I've ever been. And then before you know it, you guys are wildly in love again, passionately in love again. So it takes time. It's not an overnight process for either side, business or relationship. It takes time. But you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Verses 10 and 11, John 13 says, Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you, for Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what is meant when he said, not all of you are clean. So, friends, let's be honest. Just be prepared to be betrayed. Okay, it's going to happen. You will be betrayed, maybe by your spouse, maybe by your kids, maybe by your closest business partners. Somebody is going to betray you. So just be prepared for that. It's going to come. It's not going to be easy. Yes, your feelings are going to get hurt. Yes, you're going to want to retaliate or, you know, do some type of vengeance type thing. Yes, it's all going to be there. Just understand that's human. It's going to be there. Jesus was hurt when Judas betrayed him, even though he knew in advance. <laughs> so it's coming. If it hasn't come already, and if it has, it's going to come again. So just be prepared. Just be okay. doesn't mean you're less of a person or you're a terrible leader or whatever. People will be people, and sometimes the devil is meddling. The devil prompted Judas to betray Jesus. Even Jesus' right-hand man, Simon Peter, eventually betrayed Jesus. And Jesus knew that in advance, too. He told Peter, look, man, you're going to deny me three times. Peter's like, nah, Lord, not me. I'm right or die, yo. I'm always with you. And he's like, yeah, you too. You'll betray me, too. And nevertheless, Simon Peter betrayed Jesus as well. Well, this, remember, this is the same dude that was like, no, Lord, you're not washing my feet. Right? Like, like, Lord, I don't want you to, you know, stoop down that low. Like, nah, not my feet. Or maybe Peter just had a issue being a man of having another man touching his feet. Nah, you ain't washing my feet, dude. Get up, man. What you doing? <laughs> the, my, the first time my wife wanted me to uh, get a pedicure with her, that's how I was. Nah, man, I ain't having no dude touch my feet. It ain't happening. Because up until that point, 
my mindset was always, always saw men giving women pedicures. That was my mind. That was in my mind. So when she said, no, you can have a woman do it, it was like, oh, really? Okay, so now the skepticism started subsiding a little bit. I still wasn't on board, though. Like, ah, I went all my life would I have anybody touch my feet. Like, I, I do my own pedicures. Now I'm going to have somebody else do it. Ah, nah, I'm not feeling it. She said, well, look, just try it. Just come with me. Just come just to spend time with me. Just do it just, just for me. Okay, I right, bet. Then I get there. And I'm like, no, no dude touching my feet. All right, nah, it ain't happening. Female came out, did my pedicure. I'm like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. Now nah, I'm in love with pedicures. I try to go as often as I can. <laughs> and it was like Peter. Peter was like, nah, man, you're not washing my feet. Then Christ said, look, all right, well, if I don't wash your feet, then you don't belong to me. All right, all right, look, Jesus, right, you can wash my feet, my hands, my head, everything. I want all of you, right? I, would, I want it all. Give it to me, all. Right, I, I, I relate to Peter a lot because Peter operated in, in extremes. No, you can't touch me at all. To oh yeah, watch everything, Lord. You want to watch something else? Watch it all. I want all of you. Right, I, that's how I kind of how I operate as well. It's the extremes. There's no like middle ground. It's all in or all not. <laughs> yes or no. There's no maybes. It's total. Right. So this is Jesus. Jesus and my Peter. Jesus right hand man. The one that said, look, give me everything and watch me all totally. Got Christ. Totally, Jesus, you are the Son of Man. Like, Peter knew that Christ was the Son of God, excuse me, Son of God, before it was revealed to anybody else. He knew that. And Christ said, look, because you knew that, upon you, Simon, my rock, I will build my church. So Jesus had a lot of respect for Simon, Peter. And yet even Simon Peter, his right-hand man, betrayed him. Right, when, when Judas, Judas brought the, the people, the, the Roman guards, to, to capture uh, Christ and arrest him, it was Simon Peter who drew out his sword and cut the ear off one of the guards. Like, leave my dude alone. I'm right to die with Jesus. This is right-hand man eventually he betrayed him to. So understand it's coming. Yes, you're going to build your team. You're going to build it large. And one of your right-hand men, right-hand women, are going to leave and go to some other company and pull a bunch of your people away from you and go to the other company. If it hasn't happened, it's going to happen. <laughs> and it hurts. It's like, hey, I thought we were tight. I thought we were building something, Peter. I thought you had my back. You're the one that defended me. And now you, even you, are going to leave? Oh, man, come on. Your spouse might decide to leave. And you're like, yo, hold up. I thought we were building something together. It was me and you. So we was going to ride or die. We got kids. We gonna, you you going to leave? Like, what's up? And, yeah, it's, it's a kick to the gut. It is a kick to the gut when that happens. But you are not your circumstances, friends. You'll find another leader. You'll find another person. You stay focused on your mission. You stay focused on the message. You stay focused on your character. Don't let any situation cause you to give up your Christianity. And what I mean by that is your behavior, your countenance. Keep going strong and stay focused on the mission despite what people do around you. And here's the other thing. You want to be careful not to betray your people, your spouse, your team. If, if there's going to be some betrayal going on, let it be that they betrayed you. Don't you be the one to betray them. Christ never betrayed his disciples. He stayed focused on the mission. His character was unwavering. His disciples knew exactly what he, where he stood on certain issues and how he felt. He wasn't wishy-washy. He wasn't one way today, another way tomorrow. He stayed firm. He stayed solid. So they could always count on him to be Jesus. You want people to be able to count on you for your word, right? You don't want to be that person that just decides, hey, you know what? This company is great, but I found this other company that's even greater. And then you switch companies, and then you call up your people and say, look, man, the old company was good, but I found a better one. Come with me to this new company. It's going to be even better. We're going to make more money. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. Don't, don't you be the one to do that. 
although you think you're doing something good because maybe that company pays a half percentage more on your 1,000th level. <laughs> you think you're doing something great. You think you found a better opportunity. And now you want to tell your people that you found a better opportunity as well and rip them away from the first company and have them go to the second company. You're doing more harm than good. Because now you're saying that original company that we got with it's not as good as it used to be. It's not good anymore. Let's switch. When you do that, you destroy people's hopes and dreams. I know you're thinking, oh, that's not true. I'm, I'm showing something better. No. They were locked in to the vision, to the mission that you had originally articulated. And now you're saying, hey, I was wrong. I got this other thing that's even better. Now, I get it if something's going down in a company where the founders, you know, are scandalous and they're stealing money from the company and, you know, you, you, can, you can see the company is going down. It's terrible. All types of crimes are being committed. Okay, cool. I got it. Get out, save yourself, save your team, and put them to a, a, a better opportunity. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I got that. But I'm talking about the whole idea of the grass is greener on the other side. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing's wrong with your company. You just see something you think might be better. The grass always looks greener on the other side. But newsflash, friends. The grass is not green on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. The grass is greener where you water it. You want to nurture your team. Build that thing big. Build your marriage. Nurture that marriage. Water that marriage. Fertilize that marriage. Stay there. Be strong. Don't be like, oh, man, this other girl looked a little bit better. She's a little bit younger, a little bit firmer. Hey, I'm going over there. This man over there, I mean, like he would treat me just a little bit better than my husband, a little more handsome, a little more taller, a little more whatever. Nah, friends, stay rooted where you are. Prosper where you're planted. Prosper where you're planted. Water where you are. Build your team. Build your marriage to success. Don't you be the one to betray the people following you. By switching, going to another company, getting with somebody else. Don't betray your, your kids by now trying to find some other dude, some other chick, and leave the spouse that you have. Again, I'm not talking about abuse and rape and all that stuff and, and adultery. and all, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you have a, a solid marriage, but yet you guys feel like you're growing apart. Irreconcilable differences. There's no real crimes being committed, right? But... You just feel like I'm just not as in love as I used to be. Let me go find somebody else. Uh, nah. Prosper where you're planted. Fertilize where you are. Take the time to show your spouse the love that you believe you're missing. Give away what you want. You want love? Give it away. You want friendship? Give it away. Be friendly. Right? You want a team? Build a team by being a leader. Give You want to show the character. Be the person you want on your team. Are you? Would you follow you? Put it that way. Would you follow you? And if you wouldn't follow you, then that shows you there's some work that has to be done. So don't you be the one to betray your team, your kids, your spouse. You stay rooted and work that thing out. Verse 15, verse 12, excuse me. Verse 12, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. So what is he telling us here? He's saying, friends, lead by example. Lead by example. Right, he showed them, this is what I did, you saw me do it, now you do it. Right, he, he did not say, do as I say and not as I do. Whoever came up with that line was on crack. <laughs> That's a terrible line, do as I say, not as I do. That doesn't work. Right? And, 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 and uh, parents try to do that all the time. Right? Parents would be smoking in the house, smoking, and tell the kids, hey, don't you smoke. I'm the adult. I can do it. But don't you do it. Well, hold up, Mom. Hold up, Dad. 
If you're doing it, I should be able to do it. No, I'm older. Like, that's whack. People are going to do as you do, not as you say. So lead by example. And teach your people what you do and why you do it. Same way with your kids, right? Teach them. Take the moment to teach them what's happening. Christ took the time out to demonstrate it, and then he debriefed it. So demonstrate and debrief. As you're training your people on how to make calls and recruit and build a team, demonstrate it. They should see you doing it, and then explain why you did it. Don't just be the one that's always training. You're always training a team, but nobody sees you doing that which you're training about. So you make some calls. You talk to prospects. Let your team listen in on what you do. Listen to, let, let, them, let them hear you live talking to real live prospects. They'll have more respect for you when you now try to teach it because they saw you do it. But if they never see you do it, your words are not going to land as strong as they could if they actually saw you do it and get the results you said that they would get if they were to follow your lead. And get out of your way and take care of your people. You can go out of the way to take care of people. Christ took time with his disciples to do something, then show them, then teach them, then explain it. He could have just did it, washed their feet, and then bounced and went to the cross. But they would have never gotten the lesson. They would have never really understood why he did all that he did. Verse 17, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. All right, so that means hold on to God's promises. Even when you think things aren't working right, hold on to his promise. He just said that he, I will bless you if you do these things. So despite what people do, despite those that want to betray and lie and, and, and run from you and just be deceptive and, and betray you and set you up, despite all of that, hold on to, if I live my life this way, God will bless me. That's it. Hold on to that and watch your team grow. Watch your marriage become more loving and prosperous. Watch all of that happen as a result of your obedience to this word. To excel as a leader, you must love your people, stay loyal to your commitments, and never betray people's trust. Once trust is gone, it's really hard to rebuild, and it takes a really long time to rebuild it. So that's the message today, friends. Leadership. Love, loyalty, and betrayal. Listen, if you have a question or a comment, hit star six on your phone. I'd love to hear from you. Hit star six on your phone if you have a question or a comment. I'll give you a moment to do so. Let's pray. Friends and Father, help me. Help us to continue to do the things you've called us to do, Lord. Being a leader is not easy. If it was, everyone would be one. <laughs> it's much easier easier to be a follower than a leader. As you know, no one wants to deal with being betrayed or hurt or taken advantage of, Father. But, hey, you were. You had to go to the cross for people that did not accept you. You came for the Jews, yet the Jews killed you. <laughs> Man. Father, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you will continue to do for us. So, Father, as we go about this week, help us to remember your example of washing the disciples' feet in spite of knowing the imminent betrayal was coming. Help us to be that strong and committed to our commitments. That even when our spouse is not acting right and our kids are not acting right and our team is not acting right and people are betraying us left and right, that we continue to be like you and be solid and steady and continue along the course that you set us on. Because as you say, if we do these things, you will bless us. And that those blessings may show up in a variety of different ways. It's not for us to determine how the blessing will come. It's just for us to accept it as it comes. So, Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you. We magnify your name. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, the name above all names, we say amen. Amen. Well, friends, I pray this message has blessed you, and I look forward to speaking with you next week. Utilize this message in your business, in your marriage, and with your, kid, with your kids. And as God said, he will bless you. Not he might, not he could, but he will. Stay committed to your commitments, doing what you said you would do long after the mood in which you said it has left you. 
I love you. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.